We've entered a new era of cyber learning. It's taken us a while, but we, we're there now, or we're about to be anyhow. I'll try and convince you of that. This talk will be a set of stories, if you will, that will be set up to try and convince you of where we're going. If you don't believe it, talk to Paul Kim at Stanford. There's many Stanford people here today, in fact. And so, you know, you can take a look at Paul Kim's Pocket School Project. And, you know, this is a possibility for your teacher to be in your pocket. For wherever you happen to be in the world, you can have literacy training wrapped around you. There's a girl who's blind in India getting pocket school training through Braille readers. Kids in Argentina back in August, my son was with, our, with Paul Kim in Argentina with indigenous populations in northern Argentina. They're going to uh, Tanzania next month. But he's been around the world, Paul's been around the world getting kids education on mobile devices, migrant workers who have kids uh, in, Mexi in Mexico, Honduras, and so forth, and don't have schools or teachers can now get, get education. Their lives are being transformed. So we're stretching today. We're gonna stretch the edges of technology-enhanced teaching with this particular talk. How many of you have had your life changed through technology or transformed with technology? A lot of people. I did too. I'm a product of distance learning. I was a board accountant or CPA 25, 30 years ago, stuck in cube farms, taking correspondence courses at night and TV courses at night. Well, what if there is no tomorrow? There wasn't one today. And there I was. <laughs> but technology changed my life. Technology plus learning plus inspiration. And so I read a lot. I read 15, 20 journals every night or every week anyhow. I read from people like Elliot Soloway. As you see AI Magazine back there in 19, 85, 86, he hasn't changed. He's our next speaker, by the way, if you're not aware of that. <laughs> but he inspired me, along with Ben Dura and, and John C. Brown and many other people, inspired me along the way. But really, who opened my eyes up about learning was Bob Quasson at the University of Wisconsin and Charles Wiedemeyer, a person I never met. Charles Wiedemeyer has the best book you can buy for $1 on Amazon called Learning at the Back Door, Reflections on uh, Non-Traditional Learning in the Lifespan. He was the first one who taught distance learning courses at Madison. And he's the reason why I could sit in Milwaukee in a cube farm and learn through TV and correspondence because he made it possible. And Bob Clausen was my teacher. 25 years later, and today, anyone can learn anything else from anyone else at any time. You know, Thomas Friedman gave us his three Ps of the business world becoming flatter. But I think the education world has become open, open for learning. We have three different Ps, piping and pages of content, but it's a participatory learning culture that's key. We can all participate in this new age of learning. And in my book, The World is Open, I map out 10 trends that have combined or coalesced to revolutionize education, as Constance said this morning. And they spell the acronym, we all learn, by the way. <laughs> but it's not the e-books, it's not the open ed resources, it's not the mobile learning, it's not all the stuff that's listed in their virtual worlds. It's the people behind each of the chapters as I was writing them that inspired me to say we need to do more and collect more stories. So this talk is heading in that direction. Before we go there, not to forget this mnemonic, I need some help. And the men, you'll say we with me. On a count of three, all the men. One, two, three, we. Okay, all ladies will be all. One, two, three, all. And together we'll say learn. One, two, three, learn. Okay, we'll try it one more time. We all learn. <laughs> Sherry sure, said you're trainable, and you, well, you definitely are. A few months ago, Elliot and I were in Seoul, Korea, and we were walking through. I was in um, Iwa Women's University a few days before Elliot. When he got there, they put the rose petals down with Ka and Kathy Norris and Elliot were there. But as I walked through Iwa Women's University, I walked across the street to the number one private university in Korea, Yonsei University. I walked in the library, and every level of that building was a different kind of learning. Social learning on the first floor, collaborative learning on the second floor, uh, individual learning on the third floor, counseling and mentoring on the fourth floor. And that's not just at Yonsei. At Glasgow Caledonian in Scotland, the same thing. In fact, you could fly a plane over the top and lettering on the top of the building tells you what kind of learning is happening in the building that day. Physical spaces are changing. Opportunities for learning are growing. The world's become open for learning in physical as well as cyber worlds. And as I travel around and go to Norway or I'm in back in Korea or in Saudi Arabia, People are greeting me like this, Kurt, the world is open. You know, so if you all could do that for me here, I'll get your picture. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. 
So the world's become open for learning for all of us today. Some of us are tinkering. Some of us are doing blended learning, right? We add cases into our classes, pathology cases, forensic accounting cases. You know, we're, we're, we're tweaking our classes, enhancing them this way. Some of us add people like Brian Ford in his new book on secret weapons of Nazi Germany and how they tried to feminize Hitler. He's working on a book on the intelligence of cells and another one on the future of meat. He was the head of Mensa in the UK, in, in the BBC and other things. Brian's fascinating, and you can go to his Wikipedia page, just not today, <laughs> and look him up. And you can bring him into your class, and he'd be happy to come in. But that's just tinkering with things. Some of you are tottering. Instead of reading books, you have your students write books. My students write books with students in China and India and other places, wiki books. My friend Ron Austin at York has students design the syllabus and lesson plans with them. Some of us have competitions for the end of the semester best movies. We have movie documentaries of what they've learned in our classes. Okay, we totter with our classes a bit. But I think we're at a jumping off point today. I think we're moving into a new era, as I said to start. And so I'm going to need your help again. Can everybody stand? <laughs> OK. Even in the back row. All the men with me on the count of three, we're going to jump. One, two, three, jump. That's pretty pathetic. All the women, one, two, three, jump. And everyone together, one, two, three, jump. I told you I'd get them jumping for me, Sherry. Um, even Roy P, you got a seat. <laughs> So here we are. Even Elliot will be jumping here in a second. <laughs> Extreme learning. This is what my, my research team and I are studying. By the way, Mink Young and Il Ho, you're back in Indiana watching. You guys can go to sleep now. They've been working really hard all week. I'm my team back in Indiana. Uh, you know, we've been working and studying people whose lives are changing. And we're analyzing over 300 different websites for extreme learning that get at virtual worlds, uh, shared online video, global education, social change, online language learning. We're trying to understand what's happening and how people's lives are being changed. Whether we're learning on a boat, on a plane, on a bike, in a car, on a snow slide. This study, Erin Daring, funded right here by National Geographic, the Polar Husky Project and Earth Education and so forth. Great stuff out of Minnesota. You know, the uh, book The World is Open doesn't start with things I wrote. It starts with this woman, a rugby player at UCLA is studying First Nation people in Hope, British Columbia. And I'm in Bloomington, Indiana, as an armchair Indiana Jones, understanding a bit about what she's doing because the web brings her into my home. And I can respond to her, I can talk to her online and ask her questions. And she's coming to me live, in effect, and I can be an armchair Indiana Jones, okay? Today, everyone can learn, anyone can learn anything from anyone else at any time. And so Lily is talking about her discoveries. David Thomas is doing his dissertation in Afghanistan, but his wife wouldn't let him go to Afghanistan. Just, she's where his head would be chopped off in Kandahar. He found 450 sites of interest using Google Earth that no one knew about. My friend Bridie Fennell, her parents were getting a a ship in Brazil and sailing it back to South Carolina. She took classes from the Indiana University High School and practiced her French lessons on different islands along the way. Ship dock captains could practice her exams, retired teachers in Granada. She can be learning all the time. Adora Swivtak, the world's youngest teacher, she's been teaching since she was six. She's 14 now, teaching more than half of her life. She's ready to retire. <laughs> I'm sure Adora's watching now. Hey, Adora. Um, she teaches teachers how to teach writing. She teaches kids about civics, about new web technologies. Wendy Ermold from the University of Washington listens to MIT contents in her ears and learns about chemistry and physics and so forth while she's in the polar ice. Learning's available all the time. There's no university there. This is open ed. My friend Lucifer. How many of you have a friend named Lucifer? <laughs> My friend Lucifer Chu created the OOPS project the open source, open courseware prototype system. He made a million dollars at age 26. He just got married, ladies. Um, and he took half of that money, and he's translating MIT contents free to the world to Chinese people in Taiwan and in mainland China. He's now translating The Hobbit. We've got 
Cassandra Brooks, who's studying the Antarctic toothfish. And kids can ask her questions through the Exploratorium Ice Stories project as she's researching it in Antarctica. We've got Chinese pod, English pod, Spanish pod, live mocha. Millions of people are learning languages all around the world, and we're going to try and capture that. They're learning history. They're learning from Amy Burvell's work, over 50 movie videos for history. They're learning from massive open online courses. So my team is now creating the Extreme Learning website, and we're going to be cataloging stories at the Extreme Learning website in the Humanities Open Platform for the Exchange of Stories. We'll be getting kids like this one to enter in how their life was changing with technology, either through mobile or through web-based technologies. And our research is called DREAMS, Design-Based Research for an, op for an Engaging and an Active Mobile System. So we're going to try and provide people with hopes and dreams to capture stories of life change, inspiration, like Elliot inspiring me before I went to graduate school. I hope we can inspire other people to continue their cyber educations and their face-to-face -face educations through the hopes and dreams system. Thank you very much.